Hello and welcome to this video in which we will discover 7 sacrifices you must take to escape poverty. Nobody wants to be poor, and for those who are poor, none of them wants to stay poor. This is not a fact everybody knows, right? There is no dignity in staying poor, no matter how much you romanticize it. It is not a good fashion trend to follow. Since nobody wants to stay poor, why then are people still poor? The answers are numerous, in fact, too much to be discussed here. From the family's background, to a country's economy, to education, to ill luck, the list goes on and on. But that isn't what I want to talk about today, far from it. In this post, I want to share with you 7 sacrifices you must take to escape poverty. These sacrifices are not cast in stone, mind you, but they guarantee an upward mobility in economic and financial value if you adhere strictly to them. Just before, make sure you subscribe to the channel and don't forget to download your free book on financial freedom by clicking on the link in the description below. A quick story. Francis was born into a family where money was a big problem. He had three siblings, one brother and two sisters. His parents were peasant farmers and so the best they could afford was a decent meal. Decent, though, doesn't mean a fat diet with all the necessary vegetables and meat and fat and oil, you know, the balanced diet kind of food. Nope. Food was anything that could comfortably slide through the throat and fill the stomach without causing any health damage. Francis was 13 when he started working on the farm with his father. He and his two older siblings would join their parents on the farm after they had returned from school. It wasn't the ideal conditions, but the family's survival depended on the farm produce. They sold most of the farm produce in the village market. The years when the weather wasn't favorable to them, they scraped through each day. It was tough for Francis and his family. When he dropped out of high school, just like his older siblings before him, it was not discussed. He just knew when his father started complaining of poor harvest, the mounting debts, and the high cost of buying some of his notebooks – he did not buy him textbooks well, – he knew it was time to tow the family route, drop out of school, and join the family farm. He would often ask his father why he wasn't rich. Francis was fascinated by the fact that his uncle, his father's younger brother, was doing well for himself. His father's response, whenever he asked the question, was, well, getting rich is not too important. So long as you have your family, it's okay. Moreover, he would say on some days, I wasn't made by God to be rich. That is just how it is. Francis, unconvinced with the answers his father was giving him, decided to go against his father's instruction. When he turned 18, Frustrated with scrapping for the barest minimum to survive, he went to see his well-to-do uncle. Francis's father had warned his children against having anything to do with this, said uncle, because he was not a good man, the father said. Francis disobeyed and went to see this uncle. If you want to know how to escape the firm grip of poverty, the uncle started, you have to promise me that you'll stick to these lessons I want to teach you. Francis nodded. First, you must understand that becoming financially stable requires sacrifices. You must give up certain things and pick up new ones. You must move from where you are in your finances to where you want to be. Then, certain behaviors and attitudes and actions must change. Nothing will change by itself. It requires sacrifice. I understand, sir. I am ready and willing to make those sacrifices, Francis replied. To escape poverty, and these are things I have done and am still doing, you should be ready to do these seven things. Eliminate the poverty mindset. I know that nobody likes to think of himself as having the poverty mindset. I'm very aware of how much the concept of mindset has been played down by people, said to be a psychological ploy rich people use to confuse the poor. I am not oblivious to the jesters who say the mindset change is bogus. I hear them. But if you ever want to leap out of the poverty zone, then you must change how you see life. The way a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. 
Many people, including your father, still think about themselves in the light of being poor. They don't see themselves, or to put it accurately, they haven't sufficiently worked their minds into seeing themselves as financially free and prosperous. You might be wondering how I know about their mindset when I am not even in their mind. Francis nodded. Good, I'll tell you. The language they speak shows, glaringly, the kind of mindset poor people have. From the abundance of the heart, you were taught in Sunday school, the mouth speaks. Am I right? Yes, you are right. We were taught that people say what they are in their hearts, Francis responded. Good. Does it mean that from the kinds of words a person uses, the language of money he uses, you can tell what he has in his heart? The way your father thinks about money affects his language, and his language, inadvertently, affects how he is. He would often tell you, I assume, that money doesn't fall from trees, right? Yes. And he will also say something along the lines of, money is not easy to come by, am I right? You are right. That right there, Francis's uncle continued, is what hinders him from seeing opportunities and making money. If you want to break away from here to get off the poverty train, you must change how you think about money. Your outlook on life and money shouldn't be that of lack but of abundance. The right money mindset is essential if you want to break away from poverty. Read books. Nothing will happen until you make it happen. In the same vein, you cannot move up the ladder financially if you don't know where up is and how to get there. You can have the right mindset all you want, you can think positive thoughts all day for the rest of the decade, but if your knowledge base is shallow, your thoughts and words would be shallow, and no sooner than you started cultivating such a mindset, you would slide back to the poverty mindset. You need to have the right knowledge of finance, of money, to be able to escape the grasp of poverty. When I was younger, I decided to invest my time in reading books about finance from the local library. I knew it was not going to be easy. Leaving the farm and heading over to the library to still learn and borrow books was grueling for me, Francis's uncle said. There were days when I didn't feel like reading a damn book, but I did. I read about great men and how they became great. I read about the history of money and how money multiplies itself if put in the right soil. I read about paying oneself first and investing in useful skills. I learned about adding invaluable values to things and people without flinching. Books opened my eyes to the financial possibilities that were ahead of me as well as the innate abilities I had. Books were the light I needed to help my thought patterns stay focused and improving. From books, I learned how to plan for my future and how to invest in my present. But I read books sometimes. That is the problem. You read sometimes. You don't read to learn or improve. You read for entertainment. If you want to be financially free, reading for leisure doesn't cut it. You must be intentional about what you read and how often you read. You must be willing to give up hours of your time to read. You must be ready to put your body under subjection. You will only perambulate around a spot if you aren't intentional enough. Financial freedom requires intentionality of sacrifice and time. So, my other advice to you is to read books. Don't ever be tired of acquiring knowledge. The day you stop learning is the day you start dying. Avoid toxic people. You can only grow as the level of people around you. There is no way you can escape poverty if you keep on moving with people who have no vision, no plans for their lives, and whose sole aim in life is to remind you how impossible it is to make it out of here. I was deliberate about the people I related with. The moment I decided to break away from the lies of money we were told all our lives, I knew I needed new circles. I didn't particularly search for rich people or children or wealthy men to become friends with, not at all. I searched for people whose ideas of money and their drive for success was at par with mine or superseded mine. I realized all too early that staying with people who didn't see beyond their noses financially would hinder my growth and progress. 
It was impossible to talk about ideas and money and to break free with people who only saw limitations in life. I need optimism and dreamy-eyed people. In life, your circle of friends would inadvertently define how far you go. Francis, the mental realms your friends and circle would take you to are beyond words. They would expand your mind and help you see the possibilities in everything. But my friends aren't toxic, Francis said. They love me and we are great together. I used the word toxic because, in life, people are either adding value to you or taking them away from you. If your friends are not adding value to you, then they are toxic. It doesn't matter how friendly they are. If their vision and drive for success are nowhere near what you desire, then they are bad for you. But I like being around these people. I know. But that is why these things are called sacrifices. They were not designed to be easy, at least in the short run. But as you keep at it, as you continue to grow your circle of friends, of like minds and visions, you would see just how important the decision was. So how do I find these people? Francis asked. You don't look for these people. They would come to you. Or you would go to them. Like attracts like. If you consciously build your mindset, your knowledge set, you would gravitate toward vision-driven people, or they would come to you. You have to be willing to take the chance and make new friends. Don't feel entitled. There is nothing as limiting as feeling like the world owes you something. The world doesn't owe you shit! Never you forget that. The world wasn't designed to make you happy. The world would not come falling onto your laps and money would not automatically appear in your box of money because you feel like it. You aren't entitled to anything. Zilch. Not a single thing. Francis, you are young and if there is anything I want to instill in you, it is this. The world doesn't give you what you want. It gives you what you deserve. Therefore, my dear boy, you need to stop expecting people to hand things over to you or for the universe to give you wealth because you have suffered for too long. Such thinking is pure bullocks. Erase it from your head. You get what you deserve. If you feel you don't deserve what was given to you, fight for it! But don't wait for the world to hand you things, or for your rich uncle to automatically give you handouts. That is what my father is always complaining about. He says, you don't give people money, that you don't help your people. That is why he stopped us from coming to you. He says you are wicked and selfish and that is how all rich people are. Selfish people who only want wealth for themselves and nobody else. I know what your dad thinks about me. I have heard it firsthand. But I am sorry, but my next statement might offend you. Go ahead, I am ready for anything. So long as it will help me escape poverty. Okay. I will tell you. Your dad is entitled. He believes that because I have enough, that I have to give him money whenever he asks. He still thinks my money is the family's money. That isn't true. Nobody owes you anything. Keep that in the front of your mind. Front? Isn't it supposed to be the back of my mind? Francis said as he laughed a bit. Yes, it is supposed to be at the back of your mind, but I want you to keep it in front. That way, you would not forget it. Learn how to sell. Francis's uncle gulped the glass of water on his table. He turned to Francis, whose eyes were bulging with excitement. The next sacrifice you must make, and I say this with all seriousness because most people hate to hear this, is learn to sell. Selling is an important lesson every rich person has learned. You know why? Francis nodded in the negative. Because no matter the amount of value you have to give people, if you can't sell it well, nobody would buy it. You can have all the skills in the world, but if your selling skills suck, you are only but an intelligent poor man. A broke ass. You can never, I repeat, NEVER break out of poverty if you still view selling as evil. Everybody sells. Your dad sells. I sell. Your mother sells. The local banker down this street sells. Every single person is selling. They are either selling values, time, or goods. The problem, however, is that some have more skills than others and are great at selling what they have. 
The exchange of value for financial reward is not a skill anybody is born with. Even the most excellent salesman in the world learned how to sell. I will not spend too much time on this because I believe you already have an idea on what selling looks like. And like you already know, selling is how you appease the buyer's emotions and satisfy their needs. So, as you go on to learn about money, build your circle of friends, and improve your mind and skill, remember that selling is a must. Learn to sell and sell very well. Don't care what other people think. As long as I live, people would always talk. It doesn't matter whether you were doing the right thing or the wrong one. It doesn't matter if you were rich or poor. People always have an opinion. You are to pay no mind to naysayers because you can never please everybody. If you have decided in your heart on what to do, if that thing tallies with your core vision and purpose, then by all means, go ahead and do it. When you start taking inventory of what people are saying or not saying about you, when you begin to burden yourself with everybody's opinion of you, you lose focus. Getting comfortable demands that you focus. It needs you to keep your eye always on the prize. Don't you ever let go of what you want to do because people aren't comfortable with it? Be the black swan. What is black swan? Francis asked. Most swans are white, so a black swan is something different, something people aren't used to. Go for what you want because, in the end, you are responsible for your life. Never be afraid of failing. I had to keep this to the last because it is the knot that ties all the other six sacrifices I have taught you. I learned early in life that the path to success is filled with thousands of failure potholes. You can only be as successful as you try. If you fear failure or are discouraged by it, you would remain where you are. Failing Forward by John Maxwell helped me see failure from a different light. I discovered that failure was functional. You would fail as you try to break free from poverty. You would not always be right. You would make mistakes, financial and emotional ones that would hurt. But you should never be afraid to keep trying to keep failing. Failure is not bad in and of itself. What is wrong is how we see and deal with failure. You might get a thousand failures before that big break. You might fail in the middle of a big break. You will feel worthless at first. You will feel like you are a failure, but you aren't. You must keep moving forward. You must fail forward. What do you mean by failing forward? Francis asked. The light in his eyes was aglow. What I mean is you learn from your failures. You keep the lessons learned from every failed attempt and improve on them. You will, if you consistently follow these sacrifices, become rich. It takes time, but it will happen. Financial freedom isn't gotten through the swish of a magic wand. It requires hard work and sacrifice. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, comment, and especially subscribe to the channel. You are also free to receive the new book, 5 Steps to Financial Freedom, by clicking on the link in the description below.